I'm starting with the casing for the light. Uh, for the main body, I will use an uh, old pen. The bottom cover is uh, just a small button I have found around to cover small holes for the thread. Uh, I'm using a piece of thin uh, cardboard. For the top part, I'm using an ending from the squeezable glue. Uh, it's just the right size and uh, shape. In the future, maybe I will uh, 3D print or uh, make something uh, different, but uh, for now it was just lying around and it's uh, ready to use, so uh, why not? I just need to drill a small hole for the cable to go through. Here I'm using a thin cable. It's not specifically made for uh, those kind of lights, but I mean, it will work perfectly. A tiny drop of hot glue is added just to hold the cable in place when we will handle it. Then I'm just twisting wire with the drilling machine. Of course you can do it by hand, but it's uh, much faster. Uh, we want to achieve the effect of uh, rope. That's the reason why we're doing it. The next step is quite straightforward. Uh, we just want to attach the LED light to the cables. The only thing to have in mind during this uh, step is just to be sure that the plus and the minus is uh, totally separated. Just uh, try it a few times and see if the connection is clean. After everything is working, we can add the casing to the light. Uh, I'm just pouring some hot glue inside and then sticking the plastic tube on top, then uh, removing access with exacto knife. And then just checking one more time if everything is working. Okay, now we can move to some details, uh, nothing fancy. I'm just adding uh, thin strips of plastic card uh, to outside just to imitate a metal uh, casing around the lamp. It don't need to be perfect, we want to imitate an old and destroyed uh, lamp post. Next step would be just to add more uh, hot glue inside. I'm doing it slowly and just uh, pushing it with the toothpick, just to be sure there is not so much air left inside. And then just gluing the bottom part uh, in place. And yeah, that's it. Now we just need to make a rope on which the lantern will hang. I'm slowly twisting exposed copper cable around the encased one. It will help to create an illusion of rope. I'm adding also a drop or two of super glue on both ends just to uh, keep the twisted wire in place. I'm checking one more time if everything is working. Yeah, it look good, we can move forward. To start with the lamp post, I'm using a piece of balsa wood. I'm just cutting it to the rough shape and uh, eyeballing the length of it so we can always adjust it. Then a small treatment with the wire brush just to imitate the uh, wood grain. The whole idea is to uh, hide the cables inside the wooden post, so uh, we need to cut it in half and then make a space for the wire to go. I'm using an uh, X-Acto knife and then a uh, file uh, to make the space big enough for the cable to go inside. Now we just need to glue uh, those pieces together. The main wooden post is made uh, in the same way. Uh, wire brushing, cutting in half, making a space for the cable to go through. And then just connecting two parts together, like before. Uh, let's add a small cross beam uh, just to make it look uh, more natural. Next step is to glue an assembled uh, lamp post uh, to the battery casing. Of course you can do it without uh, this part, you can just uh, you know, connect the battery and then uh, hot glue it together. But I want to have an option to remove the battery or exchange it uh, with time. Just to be sure uh, that the cables are connected in the right way, I will keep the battery in so I can see right away if the uh, connection is good or not. When everything is working uh, properly, I'm just using a hot glue to uh, make sure it will not move. The next step is to cover the sides of the battery casing with some thin uh, cardboard. 
this step is uh, not a must, but uh, the casing I'm using is uh, not perfectly uh, flat on the bottom with some raised areas and I don't want the hot glue later on to get uh, inside it and obstruct the movement of the battery. And now we can move to making a base. I will use a hot glue for that purpose, so that's why it's important to prepare a spot on which uh, we will make it. I'm using here a baking paper. It's quite easy to remove it after the glue cooled down. While I'm pouring a glue I'm adding pieces of uh, cork and balsa wood just to uh, make it look more natural while slowly building the base. After a while when the hot glue cooled down I can uh, gently remove the baking paper. As you can see it's quite easy to do. I decided to make this uh, piece a little more uh, visually interesting by adding a lonely skeleton sitting under the lamppost. My initial idea was just to leave it there like that, just sitting. But after a while I decided it would be uh, better to uh, make it chained to the post. Yeah, someone just uh, left this poor soul there to die in that horrible way. After I'm done with the skeleton, uh, I decided to add some uh, extra pieces uh, here and there. Mm, first of all, the spike on top of the lantern, and then uh, a few smaller pieces, which should imitate uh, the nails holding the wooden pieces together. Okay, now we can move to uh, basing the piece. First of all, uh, a thin layer of uh, PVA glue just to hold all the other elements in place. I'm starting with the biggest stones first. For that purpose I'm using casting plaster leftovers. I just smash them to small pieces. And then some smaller stones and then the sand on the end. I'm going back and forth until I'm happy with the result. To hold everything in place I'm using super glue. Uh, it makes the whole process much faster, especially for the small piece like that. <laughs> 